first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's been watching the channel, subscribing, comment, liking. Um, I finally made the 1K subscribers uh, milestone, if you like, so many thanks for that. Um, keep them coming. So yeah, back to what today's video is going to be about. Um, I'm working at a small commercial um, warehouse slash office where I'm going to install a new circuit for a forklift charger. Now it's going to be a new three-phase circuit. Um, the forklift charger itself is going to be mounted in the warehouse. Um, it's like I said, it's a three-phase forklift charger, so the input um, load for the charger is 9.5 amps per phase. So I'm going to come directly from the distribution board, which is in the office. Um, I'm going to go straight outside and clip the cable externally. Now the outside of the building is mostly metal clad, but what I'm going to do is bring the cable right down to the bottom, hopefully, and try and secure that on the um, the brickwork itself um, at the lower part of the cladding, just to make it a bit more discreet. I'm going to come straight back through into the warehouse from outside, where I'll place a rotary isolator right next to where I'm going to mount the uh, forklift charger itself. So I'll terminate my SWA into the 20 amp rotary isolator. And then from the secondary side of the rotary isolator, I'm going to I'm going to put in a bit of SY cable, five core SY, um, which is going to go directly into the, the forklift charger. Now this is the second one I've installed now um, for different for different people. Um, the first one I installed came already wired up with a um, plug on it basically, so I just had to wire up to a socket and plug it in. Uh, whereas this one's actually got to be wired directly. So I'm going to show you the whole install today and I'm also probably going to explain to you a bit about how I chose the cable based on the loads, calculating the voltage drop, um, obviously the cable conditions that's being installed in. So yeah, hopefully I'll, um, I'll talk over that a bit for you. First things first, I've just been given a nice little MK air freshener from the air, uh, from the air wholesalers, from the, from the wholesalers. So I've got to find a home for that in here make this fan smell a lot better than it does at the moment so yeah i'll see you on site hope you enjoyed the video now on site <coughs> just going to show you exactly what the plan is what i'm going to do um, and then we'll get started so here's the fuse board MCG fuse board. I've never actually heard of these, but um, turns out it's CEF own brand. So yeah, we're going to come out the bottom of there of SWA gland, right down there, drill directly outside through the um, cladder. That will bring us out. Here's the window for that room, so that will bring us out down here somewhere. And that's the brickwork I was talking about. I'm going to clip all the way along there, all the way around behind these. All the way along there and then there's a little gap just below the, the door that i can uh, put my cleats to and then literally the other side of here is the warehouse so i'm now inside the warehouse that's the other side of the cladding where i just pointed to so i'm going to run low level all the way along here and the customer has said that's exactly where they want the um forklift charger mounted so i'm literally just going to come up to a rotary isolator out of there into the charger and that's good to go and the reason for it to be in all the way over here is racking's going to go all the way along there so um keep it right out of the way this is the actual forklift charger itself um here's the details of it here so three times 400 volts so three phase and then we've got an input ac of 9.5 amps and as i mentioned earlier about the sy already some connected um so i'll just be remaking that connection um and doing exactly so the all the gear i've got for the job so We've got a 20 amp rotary isolator, um, quite a small one. Um, I usually like the ones with lots of space, but we are only using a small cable, so um, not to worry there. A couple of packs of cleats. I use the tele cleats because I think they get uh, a nice bit of fit around the cable. Um, we've got our gland pack internal. Um, obviously nothing's external here, so no need for the uh, IP rating. A uh, pack of extra screws. I've got a new hole saw and a new arbor bit um, just for the cladding to make sure I get through there properly. Got my breaker down there. 
I've got my bit of SY cable there and then my SWA cable there. So that's a four core 2.5 SWA. I'll be using the SWA steel armor as the earth. And I'll quickly now go and show you how I worked out the uh, the cable calcs to, to get to that, that size cable. So now back at the van, I've got my BS7671 um, amendment free Bible <laughs> in front of me pretty much. Um, so first things first, the cable I was using is SWA. So what I needed to do is go to the back and find the current carrying capacity tables which are right at the back pretty much i've actually gone past them and we need to find the one for multi-core armored thermoplastic insulated cables which is a bit further along i believe here we go so multi-core armored 70 degrees thermoplastic insulated cables um i originally uh calculated for 1.5 because because that gives us plenty enough uh current carrying capacity for four core clip direct so that would have given us 18 amps um, plenty enough because we only need 9.5. Uh, the fault drop on that was well over um, what it should be. Uh, so I dropped it down to the 2.5 which gives us 25 amps um, current carrying capacity. So the allowed voltage drop for uh, power or distribution circuits is 5% which 5% uh, of 230 volts, 240 volts gives us um, 12 volts. So once you found or decided on the correct current current capacity of the cable you're going to use which is in this case 2.5 cable we go down to the voltage drop table below and find our 2.5 uh, again we're three or four core cable so 2.5 all the way across gives us 15 millivolts now the calculation we need to do is 15 which is our millivolts from here times our load on the circuit which is 9.5 and then we times that by our meterage, which in this case is about 29 meters. Then we press equals, and we get 4,132.5. Then all we have to do is divide that by 1,000, and that gives us a voltage drop of 4.1 volts. So we're well within, well within the 12 volts in this case. So yeah, we're um, that's basically how I decided the cable. And all I've done for the SY is literally just carried on um, with the same size cable out of the isolator. Um, so that's pretty much it. Just got the charger mounted on the wall. Another situation where I could have done with an apprentice. I didn't even film this one, but it did take me a few attempts to get it up and mark the fixing holes. So all I've done again is use some inch and a half tens with a couple of M6 washers just to make sure that is a nice secure fit on there because like I say, it is very, very heavy. Um, so all I've got to do now is undo these uh, four M6 nuts and that will release that front cover off. And then what I'm gonna do is get the uh, SY cable made off in there. Um, once I've done that, I'll get the isolator done um, and then run the SWA. The SY cable's all made off on there. Um, I'll show you me making it off at the other end. Brown, black, gray, all three phases in as they should be. So I'm now going to put the cover back on that and get the isolator mounted. Right, so I've got the isolator on the wall. Um, first thing I'm gonna show you is making off this SWA cable. Now, first things first, you want to colour it to length, so I've just gone that far past the box. Got a pair of shears, um, it's fairly easy to cut with a pair of shears, so I'm just going to do that now. So we've got our length of the cable. Now, you want to strip back this outer clear sheath just past where it comes through into the stuffing gland. So all you need to do is ring around with your Stanley knife. Give that a break either side, then that should eventually just pull straight off. Might need to put a bit of effort into it. There you go, there's the clear outer sheath of the SY. Now, so now we've got enough length to go through into that. Next thing is to peel back all these steel, this little wire uh, kind of core on the inside. Now be careful with this because the little wires in this will pinprick you and they do actually hurt. So just be careful. Right, the key for this, get a tiny small terminal screwdriver. You need to just go down one side through all the little gaps and gently spread it all apart. So keep doing this all the way to the required point. 
you should gradually spray either side of the cable. Try to only do small bits at a time because once you start doing too many they get knotted within each other. And that becomes a bit of a pain then. Separated either side just like so. Give you a bit of a closer view. So I've peeled all that, picked in between them all the way down there to split them right at the end. Now the next thing you need to do is because that's obviously metallic, we want to earth all that. So we're going to twist it all together right from the bottom. Give it a nice twist, nice and tight. all the way down so it's nice and long enough to reach your earth terminal within the isolator itself. Now there are proper glands to use for this SY cable, um, I'm just putting it for a stuff and gland in this case because um, there's no real need for the gland at this moment. So that stuff and gland is a large 20mm 20, 20, uh, one. Um, so that will do nicely up around this SY cable. So we're going to feed the inner core and the outer sheath uh, with, with made through the stuff and gland into there um, and then make it off. All right, so now the cable's in the stuff and gland and into the ice layer. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is put some 4 mil earth sleeve over this wire that I've twisted around um, off the SY cable. That's going to go into the earth terminal at the top here. And I'm going to make this sheaf off while the ice layer um, guts are out, just for the ease of ease of access while that's not in. Right, so cable is now glanded off inside the isolator. Uh, SY is all glanded off, so through the stuff and gland, separated the uh, the wire core on the outside. And that's now being sleeved and into the earth terminal. We've got all our cores ready to go there into the isolator. So now it's just a case of getting the SWA cable clipped along and made off this end. I'm all done making off the SWA. Both cables are now being terminated in the ice layer so we've got l1 l2 l3 brown black gray of the swa and then at the bottom we've got t1 t2 t3 which is the sy cable going straight to the the actual charger itself um you don't get a lot of room inside these so it is it is uh, quite hard to um make it look neat but um you can get slightly bigger enclosure but then it starts looking silly and i'm only using two five cables so um any any bigger size than that, I probably would have gone for the uh, the bigger the bigger enclosure. But this one's fine, really. Um, everything's still connected properly. It's just not overly pretty. That's all. So yeah, just going to get this clipped all the way along, all the way round, um, round to the fuse board. Um, then it's just a case of making it off in the fuse board and testing. It's inside, nicely clipped. Nice neat line all the way outside. 500 mil space in between the cleats. So. It's quite pretty solid on there. Yeah, 
outside to do now. Right, so we're all clipped along there now, nice and neatly, all the way along, all the way around there, as you can see that literally goes all the way along, around there, through the cladding, going to seal that up once I'm done, so now I'm just going to go inside, drill from inside out where the fuse board is, and then I know where exactly to clip the cable outside, and then we just got to connect it in the board. So we're all sorted outside now. Cable's in. Again, I'm just going to put a bit of clear silicon around there to seal that up. We're all clipped along. I'll just quickly show you inside. So there's my cable through the wall. I'm just going to literally come across there, up, and then do a little kick up into the board. So I'll be, I'll be able to pick up the joists for my uh, cleats and then all I'll do is put a bit of white silicon around there to seal that up or probably a bit of filler either or um, and we're good to go. So I've taken the cover off this fuse board, um, same as the last video really, I'm not able to isolate the whole board purely because um, there's a lot of servers on there, there's a hub. Uh, all the computers upstairs are on it um, and they just don't want it turned off whatsoever. So. Luckily for me, this bottom panel um, moves off so I can take that off and drill my gland into there, get my gland in position, uh, make that off into there, and then I'm going to come straight up into my breaker, which I'm going to position over here. So um, that is pretty much it. I'm going to make the gland off now and get the breaker in. So I shall see you in a minute. I've got my SWA gland in, ready to go. Got my banjo in there with a nut already through. Um, so we can fix flying lead in there and um, as you can see it's not the tidiest of boards I mean this lot here's kind of just been chucked in but there you go and just another note as well you can you can kind of tell the difference between a budget fuse board and say for example that Merlin Duran one I was working on the other week where I had the uh, you could isolate the bus bars um, individually uh, whereas this they're obviously constantly live um, and obviously there hasn't been any protection supplied to put over them or well, they might have been but the installer hasn't put them on this should, I'd, I'd like to see kind of rubber caps on those really but um yeah we've just got to be extremely careful um obviously ideal situation we'd like to isolate it all from safe isolation but um it's just not not um possible at this present moment but we'll be all right all right so cables all glanded off Decided to put the breaker on this side in the end just because it's a bit easier. Gives us an extra bit of slack. Um, we're all clipped up the wall, just got to make good of that in a bit. So, yeah, get this connected and then test. Right, so the cable's all um, terminated in the fuse board. So, we've got brown, brown, black, black, grey, grey. Um, they're all nice and tight in there. Taking them for a little bit of a walk, just for a bit of extra added length. Um, just got to put my flying lead in into the earth bar, and then we are good to go. Right, so our earth's connected in there. So one, two, three, which is the first one, two, three. Just there, so that's all in, flying leads in, that's all nice and tight, and we're ready to go. Give it a test, once we've given it a test, um, we'll give it a functional test. So. Right, so I'm now testing. First thing I'm going to do is get the ZS of the board. Um, I'm going to leave this eddy as a limitation, obviously because I don't want to disconnect the main earth while there's load on the board. So, um, you need to do your ZS uh, reading across all three phases. Um, obviously record the highest reading and remember to double the P, the protective fault current on a three phase circuit. So 0 0.41 0 0.40 
0.41. So 0.41 is our ZS and our respective fault current is, well it's come up with 0.595 so our respective fault current is going to be 1.19. KA. Alright, so that's that first test done. I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to insulation resistance um, the circuit I've put in. I'm then going to do R1, R2 test and then ZS test at the last or at the isolator pretty much. Um, and then we're done. Right, so I've joined my or I've put my live conductor into my earth terminal. Uh, so now I'm going to measure the R1, R2. I'm going to repeat this for all three um, conductors and record the highest. So don't forget to zero out your leads. I forgot to say you should have done that as well on your earth loop. So zero leads. That's done. One on the earth connector. Or earth conductor, sorry. And this time I've got the grey live line conductor connected. 0.34 is our R1 R2 value for that conductor. So I'll repeat that for the black and the brown phases and record the highest. Right, so all dead tests are done now. Um, they're all good. So last test I'm gonna do is my ZS test at the last point, which is this isolator. Um, so one probe on the earth, as good a connection as you can get. And I'm also going to put my neutral lead or blue lead on the earth as well because I haven't got a neutral at this point. And we're going to test across all three phases and record the highest uh, result again. So 0 0.71. to mention as well make sure you zero your leads before you do this test as well uh, 0 0.74 for the black phase and 0 0.72 for the gray phase so I'll mark 0 0.74 as the highest for our ZS reading of that new circuit um, so yeah I'm gonna put everything back together now and then I'll show you the kind of the finished result really show you guys the end product basically so i'm in the warehouse this is now the forklift charger the ice layer the cable i've clipped along there what i've done is put a danger 400 volts sticker on the top there's not a lot of room to stick stuff on on these small ice layers so that was the only feasible place and then obviously i've let people know exactly what that ice layer is although it's probably quite obvious um what way it is in the fuse board I um, also put a danger 200 volts on here because that is quite easily removable, that cover. So um, I couldn't see any other warnings on there. So yeah, that cable's all the way clipped along there. That goes outside through that um, cladding. I'll just take you out there quickly. So we come out of the warehouse through there. Nice bit of... <coughs> Excuse me, I was a bit of silicon along there, clipped all the way along. How well you can see under there, all the way along, all the way under there, nice and hidden on the brickwork, and then all the way up and back in again. And there's another silicon hole through there, so I think it's quite discreet actually under the. Uh, under the pad and where the brickwork is, you can barely see the cable, which is good. So back inside, where the fuse board is, and that's where we come through. All I've done is just put a bit of filler around there, so that can be uh, sanded down, sorted out if needs must. But it doesn't look too bad, to be honest. That's clipped all the way up there, clanded off into the fuse board, um, lizard nut and bolt for the banjo. There's our breaker, all labelled up, turned on, and ready to go. Um, so yeah, overall it wasn't too bad an install. Um, it is incredibly hot in here. So, yeah, 
it is very hot actually so if I look a bit hot and uh, hot and bothered then that is why so yeah that's the end of this video leave any comments you feel like making whether they be good bad it's always good to hear them um, I'm thinking about making the next video probably the test certificate the test certificate for this place um, I might do a video of me entering all the details filling that out all online on the NIC EIC online certification um, website so let me know if you do want to see that then I'll possibly make a video of that when I actually upload the certificate so um, yeah if you're interested let me know again like comment subscribe don't forget to like my Facebook page as well Shawlek Electrical Limited that'll pop down there as well hope you've enjoyed the video and keep watching I'll see you later guys bye bye